can see clear Think I'm lost inside And the end is near It's just not fair Hey guys, this is 6 one Shadow, welcome to another video on Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle, and today I'm doing a bit of an interesting video here where I'm going to be doing a guide for you guys on the World Tournament in Dokkan. Now, I know a lot of guides, I mean I'm going to be using two sources here, I know a lot of guides, they don't uh, they don't really go over like the actual, like how the, turn how the tournament is laid out and stuff, which I think is important for especially new players, and because we, we had, especially on Global, we had the, um, the 4 year anniversary, followed up by the 300 million download celebration. I think it's, um, and th because there's a lot of new players with those celebrations, I think it's important to go over like things for the World Tournament. So I'm gonna start off as with like a sort of basics thing, and then I'm gonna go into this guide right here um, from a guy on Reddit, uh, from the Hunternator. Shoutouts to him for making this. He made it about a month ago. So I'll, so if any like changes in terms of like units and stuff like that, I'll make sure to point those out. But this is a very good guide. I'll leave this as well as the Dokkan Wiki guide that I'm using right here in the description down below for you guys. And I want to do this now because um, I'm recording it a little earlier than I'm uploading it, but the World Tournament is going to be dropping. Um, should be tomorrow from when this video is coming out. So this will be a good thing for you guys to sort of prepare for. So basically the World Tournament, it lasts for three days and you basically have to... Um, it's the closest thing Dokkan has to PvP, it's pretty much that you fight other people's teams, but the teams are controlled by AI on um, the opponent's side. So, basically each um, each tournament has four rounds, the preliminary where you face three other people, and it costs 10 stamina. Then the quarterfinal, which is against one person, costs 15 stamina. Semifinal against one person, 15 stamina. And the final, which costs 20 stamina, and of course against one person. And for each one that you win, you get World Tournament points, which will, which you know we'll go over that as uh, as it gets closer. I mean, as we get through this. So, so basically, you're trying to win as many World Tournaments as you can because you'll eventually be able to get a reward card. I'll show that off a little later as well. So, uh, joining a tournament is pretty self-explanatory. You go into the quest button on the main menu and you go to where it says World Tournament. It's pretty straightforward, and then. Yeah, and, and between rounds your team's HP is recovered and you cannot switch teams during the World Tournament. That's also a very big thing. And uh, the tournament, your tournament session, it can end with uh, with one of the following situations. So you can, so either through winning the final, um, retiring during the session, uh, getting a game over because uh, you die somehow, uh, not progressing this to the next round. This will like never happen. I've been because I've been playing Do I've played the World Tournament since the first World Tournament because I've been playing Dokkan since around when it came out on Global and this right here has never happened to me before. I don't know if it's happened to any of you. If this has happened to you, let let me know in the comments down below because this has never happened to me before. And then selecting quit during the battles, just quitting out of it. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Then I already talked about tournament points. Basically, you get points um, in regards to um, in regards to like your team cost and um, how much like. In terms of your team cost, um, your damage, that kind of stuff. So it's also like the calculations um, to how you get uh, team, how you get uh, tournament points. And there's rankings based on your tournament points. So there's two types of rankings. There's going to be the global rank, which is just how well you stack against every other player that's played the world tournament, and you get rewards for that. And then, and usually for that, if you're in the top 20,000 you're able to get um, a copy of the World Tournament reward character for that tournament. And also, it's a pretty recent thing on Global, I think it's been, it's been on JP for a little longer, but if you get up to 23 million World Tournament points, you do get a copy of the World Tournament reward character, which is actually very nice. So, yeah, and then the other type of ranking is the local ranking, which is basically, it says it's called local, but it's really just like a random group of people, pretty much, that are playing the game, and the higher you get there, um, then the more like World Tournament Awakening medals you'll get, which are good for um, which are good for all the World Tournament reward cards that have Dokkan Awakenings, and you're also going to be able with that if you get in. I believe you need I believe you just need top 100 to get a copy. You'll get a copy of the current uh, local reward LR, which right now it is LR Yamcha and Puar. So yeah, so you'll be able to get one one of them. But if you get first in your local, you'll actually get two copies, which is pretty nice if you're able to grind that hard. So, let me go to tiers and leagues. So, basically this just shows how many points you get. It really doesn't matter too much when, if you're grinding the tournament up a lot. If you're trying to clear all the missions, which we'll get to later on, um, this won't matter that much because you're ultimately not going to have to, um, 
your this is ultimate not gonna matter because everyone is just gonna be at uh, at Beerus tier because Beerus tier is five million points and most players are gonna be past five million points, like way past, because there's people who grind up to like hundred hundreds of millions of points. So yeah, the, the, don't pay too much attention to these. The only time you have to pay attention pay attention to the uh, to the tiers and such like that is when you get mission rewards, which we'll go over that um, at some point. And now this is a very big thing. This next one, friends. Now normally in Dokkan, you pick when you go into a quest, you pick a friend, and then you get their leader skill and, and stuff like that. In Duel of the World tournament, you it, yeah, it says right here in the World tournament, you will not be able to enjoy the benefits your friend grants you in quests or events. The leader skill of your friend will not be activated, and you will not receive friend points. So you still have to take a friend unit, but their fr their leader skill will not activate. So that's important to note, and I'll go over more of that once I get to the other guy. Don't right? Because that that guy is more so a strategy type thing which is also very important. And then there's also bonus points where there's different bonuses yeah, yeah, there's different bonuses that you can get that will increase your points like for example um yeah, the the, uh, the more turns left before the round concludes so how fast it is the more extra yeah the more extra points you get with that and then there will also be bonus teams and there's a bunch of bonus teams and it, it'll say bonus chance when the team comes up and these are like just a list of the teams here and they give you a bunch of extra points based on uh, whichever team it is, like Dokkan Rush gives you a lot there, um, let's see, well, God Rush gives you a lot of points, Legendary Power Team gives you a ton of points there, yeah, so it really just depends on what team you get, but getting these extra points is honestly like really good as well, and it adds it on to what you would have normally gotten, so it's not like this replaces what you would have gotten from fighting in that round, you would get whatever you get in that round, like for example in a final, uh, when you defeat the last boss and when you defeat the last character in the final round, before any other, uh, before the other bonuses are added in, because those get added in later, you'll have. Um, like, let's say, for example, we fight the 23rd World Tournament team here. They give 24,000 extra points, so I would get like around 40,000 from beating um, the finals, just from beating the team there. But then, if I beat this team, I would also get another 24,000 added on top of that, which is pretty nice. So there's that, and then, yeah, I talked about local ranking already. These are the local ranking LRs, and when the LRs are taken off of the local reward, they're added to the World Tournament SSR Guaranteed banner. So right now, I'm currently still hunting for one more copy of this LR Piccolo, because I have uh, I only have three dupes in him. But then I have this TN Rainbow because I got him from the World Tournament, and then I'm working on Yamcha. My Yamcha has two dupes right now, so. so yeah, those are like the uh, local reward LRs. Then win streak bonus basically as you basically as you win um, more um, as you win more world turn as you win win more tournaments you'll get a uh, win streak bonus and that'll increase the amount of points you get and then also something very good as well is ambition which also increases your points depending on how high you go up so the initial difficulty is uh, 1.0 what well, you you start off with 1.0 2.0 and 2.5 times difficulty and then as you, and as you win tournaments, you'll be able to unlock more, and eventually, like, if your team is very good, like, if your team matches any of the ones I show on, like, the strategy guide, then you'll be able to do the highest difficulty 30 times, which is di which gives a lot more points, but it is definitely, uh, it, it can be challenging at times. So, basically, so to go over the tournament board, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Basically, the board system is similar to, uh, to that of quests, except your enemies will move around, so you have to, like, so, like, Sometimes, like, I, I always say, like, why is he running away from me? It's because they can, because, um, the way, like, the movement works is that whoever, because each, um, each person on there, so, like, if it's a preliminary, each person will have, a, will have, like, the same, like, three num will have, like, three numbers, like, you always do on a quest, and the lowest number goes first. So, yeah, there's different points here. We have, there's different, like, also spots. You have these, uh, meat bun spots. Didn't actually know they were called that, but, um, that gives you some extra HP if you, like, if you like took some damage and want to recover your HP, tournament points um, grants you uh, a an extra 5,000 tournament points, so that could be good to get. And then character cards they give you uh, give you an extra character, and those are just like R characters, so like they're not that great. And then yeah, we already talked about finishing the game and then collecting pickups and stuff. There's also like awakening medals and stuff like that in the tournament too. So tournament battles battles are pretty self-explanatory. You just fight a whole team of seven and you have to defeat them. You only have three phases though, you only have three turns though, before the battle ends, so either you defeat them in that time, or you go out and then you can go back in and get another three turns. 
So, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then rewards, you have mission rewards, which give you a lot of things like Elder Kai's, Dragon Stones, Orbs, stuff like that, which is really nice, and some Awakening Medals as well, so that's good. And then, um, yeah, that's for the mission rewards. And then for like the ranking rewards and local ranking rewards, you get those usually like three days after the tournament. So the tournaments will end Sunday nights, and you'll get those rewards on Wednesday, on the Wednesday after the tournament ends. So, and then also give some rank XP character XP. And they don't really have to worry too much about that, but they have a lot of like the uh, they have all the reward cards listed here, and I'll leave this link in the description down below, so you guys can look at this too. How long have I been going on for this, by the way? Okay, I've, I've already been going 10 minutes. So let me get to the strategy guide here once again. Shout out to the Hunter Nader. I'll leave this link in the description down below for his strategy guide, but. Um, so yeah, there's a few there's um, a few different sections here, and this is actually very well made. That's why I wanted to make a video on it, especially now with all the new players coming into Dokkan. So he writes, items play a crucial role inside the world tournament. If you're planning to go uh, high on the leaderboard, you'll need to stock up on items. These items below will help you survive during the world tournament, and also uh, supply key to your AOE units to improve on your run. AOE, I'll, we'll discuss that when we get to the team section. Aim to have two defensive items and two key items in your uh, items loadout to ensure your successful run. Okay, so the items that he uh, mainly, um, yeah, the items that he mainly um, says that you should have are Fruit of the Tree of Might, Ghost Usher, Lemo, or any of the type items depending on your, uh, depending on what unit you're using, and King Yama. Now, now what I normally do. I do a slightly different strategy. Like I bring, I bring through the tree of my 100%. I bring Ghost Usher 100%, and I bring King Yama 100%. But for the last item, I usually bring like a, um, I bring a different key item. I don't bring like the uh, the change key spear items. I just bring like another key up item. Like I bring, um, I think it's Shu. Yeah, it's, it's that one down down there that's below the uh, fruit of the tree of might. And as you guys can see, the fruit of the tree of might, Ghost Usher, and King Yama. They have these three icons above them, the Boma icon, the Baba icon, and the Hachiak icon. And it says items above with the following symbols can also be obtainable from the Baba item is the Baba icon is the Baba shop, uh, Genie's Boma battle prep is the Boma thing, and that event comes out before every world tournament. I don't remember what day it's coming out, but it'll be coming out at least a couple days before the world tournament starts, so that'll be a good place to farm out some support items. And then the hero villain stages, those are the stages on the weekend. And um and so, like, if you're struggling like, during a world tournament, you can go you can go into those stages and like do that to get some more of those items if you need to be. So, in the stages, we pretty much went over this already. But uh, there's four different rounds, and preliminaries against three people, and then the other rounds are against one. So there we go. And then, okay, so now enemies. There are a few things to keep in mind when, chal when challenging your enemies, which are the le which are the leaders in the AOE units. So. These are all the current AOE units in the game. Let me see. Is there anything that's actually missing here? Or do they have? All? I think he. I think he has pretty much all of them. Or at least all. Or yeah, I think it's all of them. Or at least all the relevant ones. So, uh, be cautious whenever you encounter one of these units, as if they super attack, you will die. Even if your main unit dodges the attack, the rest of the team will still be hit. That's actually never happened to me before, but that's very interesting that you'll still get hit with that no matter what. So, definitely like when you're fo make sure to focus on those AOE units. And if, if one's going to be attacking you before you attack, I would just recommend using a Ghost Usher to make sure that they can't attack. So let's see, the leaders in the enemy team will have their leader skill activated, therefore all the units that fall under the skill will gain extra HP attack and defense. And here are some examples of these. Yeah, these are some uh, very common leaders that you'll see. You'll see Turles for movie bosses, uh, Dragon Ball Super Broly for like movie bosses, full power. You'll see uh, STR LR Broly for just like an extreme STR team, because that can work. Uh, you'll see... Darkness Toa for extreme types, and then, um... Yeah, oh wait, no, no, I just realized that this, this was a team, I'm dumb. Yeah, because they all fall under, they all fall under movie bus bosses or extreme AGL, but then these units here, they they won't receive that buff. And also this chapter here is very important, I'll get to that later on. But yeah, Turles is the leader of the team, writing movie bosses leader skill, and uh, extreme AGL units that leader skill, and uh... Yeah, two Broly's and Toa fall under the lead, and the rest of the units will not get any stat boosts. Okay, so now we go teams. So normally you're, you're, you're normally you're used to running these teams, right? Like Evolution Blue Vegeta, Pure Saiyan, uh, Angel Golden Frieza, uh, Revive Warriors, um, AGL uh, Su Super Saiyan Gogeta um, Movie Heroes, or like um, LR Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, Vegeta's Family. 
But if you're planning on running any similar teams above for the World Tournament, then you need to stop. Because these teams, while they're great for Dokkan events and stuff like that, they're not what's going to cut it in the World Tournament, especially if you want to get the 30 times difficulty. So, yeah, the best the best teams for the tournament require a good leader, AoE units, and support units. Whenever possible, it's highly recommended to run Jocko and Chaozu in your team, as they will 100% stun all of the enemies. That's why I was talking about this in Chaozu before. It's he, uh, him and then the tech Jocko. You'll see them, they will uh, stun all enemies for their first turn in the battle. And that resets for, like for example in the preliminary, that resets for each, uh, for each individual fight. So, they really make things a lot easier. And he gives a ton of recommended teams here. With, uh, with sub leads as well. This is the last part of it, so I guess I can kind of go through this. So, starting up here, he has movie bosses. This is the build I personally use. I personally use the movie bosses. The only difference is that I don't own uh, STR LR Broly, so instead I run the Easy A, um, I run the Easy A STR Broly because he's still an AOE unit and still does some solid damage. So this team works out pretty well. And then as a friend, I bring the uh, I bring an STR LR Broly. Then we have STR Rose Goku Black, which is good because he gives some he gives key on his passive. Uh, Turles gives key on his passive as well. And then you have the two Broly's here for AOE, and I think this Piccolo is a support as well. And then. Paragus um, is a support as well. So, this team doesn't run Jocko and Chaozu, but I think this team could still pretty much work, and there's a lot of sub options for that team, so that's good. Then the Android team, you could run um, you could run um, LR Cell and STR Cell. STR Cell did get a big buff. It, um, I think, yeah, STR Cell did, I don't think he had his EZA when this uh, when this post was made. I'm not sure though, but, but, um, yeah, but if, if he didn't, then he does now and he's a lot better. So this team I think could work. Now with that easy A, and then you have Jocko and Chaozu there for the stunning, all that kind of stuff. And then one that I'm very interested to try, even though I don't have, you know, once I get like leads for this team, is Wicked Bloodline because of this free to play, um, it is free to play second form freezer right here who is an AOE. Like I I'd be interested to try this out once I get a uh, Wicked Bloodline team because that could be pretty cool. And Extreme Physical can also work because you have Cell and you have Dragon Ball Super Broly and this uh and this freezer and. Yeah, the Frieza is not on global yet. We do, ex I do expect him to be on global next month because I think the Super Saiyan Goku Dokkan Fest is next month, and that's where he came. Uh, his the event to get him um, all grinded up was from that uh, celebration, so that's good. And then it moved for the support, Jocko Chaozu, and then um, Extreme STR running uh, STR, yeah, running STR Cell. Uh, with his loving key, Broly with his AOE, and then Fat Boo also. Fat Boo is also pretty cool because. Fatbu has a chance to stun on his AoE, so if you don't kill kill an opponent, you could stun them, and that could be really good. Yeah, so that team works out pretty well. Artificial life forms also works out nicely with um, Cell and Boo, and they'll do pretty good there. And then you also run STR Cell as well as another AoE option. Then you have Time Travelers. Not sure about how this team's gonna do. I mean, on Global, I don't think it'll work as well because you don't have the support. We don't have the support Mai yet. It's, it's the Dokkan Awakening of the Intelligence Mai. So she's a very good support for time travelers, but um, I think like on JB this team is pretty viable. Then pure Saiyans, you have uh, the two Brolies pretty much, which is gonna w that's gonna work out just fine. Then the sub is is Majin Vegeta, a AGL LR Majin Vegeta, which he could work, but it's kind of hard to get his 18 because you need to get his 18 key with them. That that's what makes Broly your clearly superior because you need to get Majin Vegeta's 18 key to do the AOE. Transformation boost, you get Broly, Dragon Ball Super Broly, you get Cell, and yeah, overall this team just works out pretty nicely, I think, with uh, with those two. Like those two, like Broly won't have an issue supering, and then Cell, you can focus on getting Cell uh, orbs to get a super attack there. And then Resurrected Warriors, you can run um, Majin Vegeta and LR Broly. This team could work out pretty well, and then you have Cooler for the support there. And lastly, a free-to-play team. I do like that he put this so, like. Because a lot of these teams, you know, they have LR Broly and Dragon Ball Super Broly and stuff like that. Units you, like free-to-play players, might not have. But there is a free-to-play option here. Even though it, it has a unit that isn't on global yet, the Frieza w should be on global by the time that the next World Tournament happens. So we should still be able to ha that this team should be able to be ran. And the only other thing is that just that you need this cell. But I'm sure there's other uh, free-to-play support units out there that you could run because the main AOE here are Riots and the second form. And yeah, when selecting a friend or guest, try to find an AoE unit that fits under your current leader. Yep, so... Yeah, so that is a V-Guide there. So, 
I'm gonna end off the video here, guys. Let me know what you thought of this guide, and let me know if you guys want other guides like this for certain things in Dokkan, whether it be like Uber Battle Road, Legendary Goku event, when that comes to Global. I probably am gonna cover a Legendary Goku event like this. I might do a guide like this if you guys enjoy it. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and share all that fun stuff. And I will see you all next time.